It's all good. Second uh, Timothy chapter 4. Second Timothy chapter 4. All right. Well, Candace, good to see you. Well, it's good to see everybody. But uh, I feel like family's coming back home. And it's all good. Becky, good to see you guys. Amen. All right. Um, anybody want to have a praise? Just like to thank the Lord for something today. Anybody? How about a memory verse? Anybody? Anybody have a memory verse you'd like to share? A scripture you've memorized. Second Timothy chapter 4, please. Second Timothy chapter 4. And uh, I'd like to talk about the most important book in the world. The most important book in the world. Um, Second Timothy chapter 4, verse 1. It says, I charge thee... Therefore, before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom? Preach the word. Be instant in season, out of season, reprove. But after their own lust, Shall they heap to, them, to themselves teachers having itching ears? You know, we've read these are verses for years and years. And um, sometimes when you read a scripture and then you see things happen, it just comes to life more than, more than ever. And um, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we're thankful for thy word. Please just, please ask for your help, your filling of thy spirit, and give us ears to hear, uh, and help us where we are today, in Jesus' name, I pray, amen. So, I Christ, now, why? Uh, the Bible says, um, he will judge you at the last day. Uh, he'll judge the quick and the dead. So what do we do to get ready for judgment? Because it's coming to every one of us, right? We're all going to face God. We're all going to stand before him. We're all going to be judged by God. Think about that. You ever, you ever have somebody look at you and you feel like they're, what we say, judging you, right? My, my pastor, Dr. Creed, he could stare a hole right through you. I remember I learned a long time ago not to ask any questions, especially in church, because we have sometimes have like question answer things, and, and you'd ask him a question, and you're trying to be small, he would just stare at you like that. I'm, I'll stare at Lane from the pulpit. Just uh, he was thinking, but that's just. Could you imagine what it's going to be like when God's staring at you? And, uh, well, we know that's going to happen. So, but God says it's not a surprise, and I want you to understand that it could be a great day. It should be a great day for a Christian. Paul said, uh, for those that love his appearing, you know, some people are excited about going to heaven and meeting God. Well, what do we do to get ready? Well, the Bible says preach the word. The word of God is what gets us ready for that judgment. Uh, be instant in season. As we share the word of God, be instant in season. Amen. Uh, there was a time where preaching in churches were popular, and, and it's not as popular as it used to be. Now, it's getting a little bit out of season. Where some things you might say, uh, I'll share a few things tonight, but uh, you could say a lot of things that are not popular. It's kind of getting out of season. I mean, what if we, what if we go to jail for preaching... Uh, just something simple that the Bible says that sodomy is wrong. I mean, it's just in the Bible. Just, you know, you can't not read the Bible and not see that, but, but it's not popular. It's getting kind of out of season. Well, the Bible says we still preach it. We still preach Amen. the word. Um, be instant in season, out of season, when it's convenient, when it's not convenient, when it's easy to do, when it's not easy to do. Uh, reprove. Um, and that's where 
God helps us to understand where, where we're out of, out, of, uh, out of sync with the word of God. Rebuke. But not because God's mad at you or hates you. He wants to help you to get right and have a great life. So uh, exhort with long, long, long. We all need help. We all out of out of line. Uh, that's why we need long suffering for others and with ourselves. Amen. And doctrine. Keep the truth. Uh, long suffering means they're not doing right. People are not doing right. Well, uh, have you ever felt like, man, I just, I just haven't had enough of that lady, man. She's just, she's just never going to do right. That guy's never going to do right. Long-suffering. Well, if we're going to be around perfect people, we might as well quit having church if everybody is good. We have church because we need it. But just keep the truth. I said that a thousand times, doctrine, doctrine, keep the truth. And the thought of that word doctrine is just not teaching the truth. The thought of that word doctrine is, is that you're teaching it, you're giving it, and uh, you're, you're teaching the same thing over and over. Um, verse 3, because the Bible says, for the time will come, which meant when that was written, it hadn't come yet. And I wonder... If it's if it, if we're here now, I wonder if we're close to it now. Are we or or are we getting into that? Take Brendan for instance. I'm preaching. He's over there talking. Nobody. He doesn't care. He could care less what I'm saying. I'm sorry. Okay. Um, see, Diana started it. Now he just joined in with her. Now they're just they're just having a little fellowship over there. Okay. Uh, but hey, listen, the time will come when what? They will not endure sound doctrine. You know what that means? They can't take it. They can't take it. Have you ever talked to somebody that needs to say, just shut up, just, just, just stop? Have you ever seen anybody do that lately? They stopped it. The Bible talks about I used to read about this. They stopped their ears. People do that now. People are doing things like that. I mean, I used to read about it. It's like, okay, well, you know, figure it. Brother Richard's talking about figurative, literally. You know, but I was like, well, I've never really seen anybody do that. But, you know, but God said the time will come. Guess what? People are doing that now. Uh, And uh, it says that they won't endure sound doctrine, but after their own lusts, Keep to themselves teachers having itching ears. You know what that is? Um, they don't, they don't want to hear what the truth is, so they'll find somebody to say what they want to hear. Amen. I used to do that as a kid. If, if dad didn't say what I wanted, I went to mom. I mean, that's just natural for us to do. But as a child of God... We should desire to want to know what the truth is, what's right. Uh, and so they, they, the thought there is pile up teachers to get a group here, to have some over here. You know, the world does that. Maybe, maybe in a, a, a college somewhere over here, there's some, there's some teachers, maybe a, a liberal place or a liberal church over here or, or uh, some family members over here. You know who to go, go to, talk to if you want to hear it. Tell you what you want to hear, and uh, and so you got your little pile. But uh, after their own lust, he to themselves teachers. So you have doctrine versus lust, is what it is. Doctrine is, is what's right. Lust is what I want. Uh, what's right versus what I want. If I don't want right. Let me read you a couple of verses. You can turn if you like, but, but, but stay there in 2 Timothy chapter 4, because um, that's our main place there. But in Isaiah chapter 5, Isaiah chapter 5, if you want to look there, please. Isaiah chapter 5, um, <clears throat> and look at verse 20, verse 20. Now, this is writ, written some almost 3,000 years ago. 
closer to 2,700 or so, but a long time ago. That's a long time, okay? Verse 20, it says, Woe to them that call what? Evil good. Evil good. And good evil. Go out there and say, uh, uh, there's no such thing as a transgender. If you're born a man, you're a man. Amen. If you're born a woman, you're a woman. You can't change, uh, uh, some, Emily's telling God, you can't change chromosomes or whatever. I don't know all that. I don't need to know all that. I know what God says. You can't change it. You, hey, listen. Uh, you, you, you know, you, you go out there and say, uh, um, you know, you shouldn't get high or whatever. Become illegal. Okay? Uh, and then, then 20 years ago, they were trying to pass laws against preaching against certain things. I mean, they've been trying this for a long, long time. The time is coming. Okay? Does that mean we, what do we do? We just got to be instant, out of season. Yeah. It says, woe to them that call evil good and good evil. Now watch this. That have put. See, it's been placed. Let's make sure that's prominent. This is in its place. This, we're going to switch them. Okay? That have put light or darkness for light and light for darkness. Hey, is this where we are today? Okay, look at, back at 2 Timothy chapter 4. 2 Timothy chapter 4. Verse, uh, verse 4, the Bible says, And they shall turn away their ears from the truth. Doctrine. Thus saith the Lord. And, sh and shall be turned unto fables. Do you know what a fable is? A fable is a, a made-up story. You read about Cinderella? That's a fable. You read about uh, Beauty and the Beast? That's a fable, right? Hey, people teach fables as truth. Right. And that, that's been going on for a long time, but now, now we're getting into... It's just obvious, and but people just believe it. Okay, when I, when I was in, um, we were talking about Nanjamoy right before church. Who was it? Okay, Brother John. Okay, the armpit of the universe. I used to live on the last paved road at the time, and um, when I was in Nanjamoy, I had a teacher named Mr. Horsey. And Mr. Horsey taught, um, I'd never heard this in my life. First time I ever remember hearing this. He said, did you know that your great, 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 great grandfather was a monkey? And I love monkeys. <laughs> so I thought that was cool. Very cool. And he said, your great, great, great grandfather had a long tail. That frivolous to my ears. I loved it. I went home. I, was, I wasn't normally excited about school, but I was excited that day to tell my mom about my great, 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 great grandfather. And I said, Mom, great, great, great grandfather had a tail. He was a monkey. And he swung from trees. And she wasn't as excited as I was. She said, you go back and tell Mr. Horsey maybe his grandfather did, but not yours. <laughs> hey, listen. Um, that's just a made-up fairy tale. Because then he told me about where we all came from, and he said, well, there was a little speck of dust. And out of that speck of dust, I mean, I loved it. I mean, all of it sounded really cool to me. You know, it exploded 
into everything that there is, the universe and the world and trees and oak trees and sequoias and people. And I said, it came out of that little speck of dust. Yep. It's a made up fable. And then, uh, then, I, then I go to the Bible and it says, in the beginning, God. And, and sometimes when I've talked to people that believe that, just, where'd God come from? Well, the Bible says he just always was. Where'd your speck of stuff come from that exploded? My thing was popcorn and uh, just exploded. And now, see, it's just all faith. Are you going to have faith in the word of God, the rock of Christ, or a made-up story that nobody has any, well, just made up, a made-up, the Strong's Dictionary says, a tale that is fiction. Well, here's, here's what happens. If they don't like your story, we'll just get rid of it. And that's what, that's what the devil's been trying to do for you all, you know, since he's been here, just get rid of the story. Uh, we call it cancel culture now. Well, it just doesn't exist. It never happened. It's just not true. Well, you can't cancel God. You can't cancel God. And, uh, hey, listen. So they shall turn. So just because uh, uh, one person does it doesn't mean you do it. I used to hate when my mom says that. If everybody does it, you're going to do it too? If everybody jumps off a bridge, are you going to jump off too? Right? Did your mom ever tell you that? Hey, listen, it doesn't matter. Who or how many, if you have God, if you're with God, you're in the majority. And um, let me read your verse. I'll tell you what. uh, Go ahead and turn to Hebrews chapter 5. Hebrews chapter 5 real quick, please. But hold your place there in 2 Timothy chapter 4. So if you're only going to turn to 1, keep your place in 2 Timothy chapter 4. <clears throat> hey, let me, let me just say, people can't cancel you. They might not listen. They might stop their ears. They might not endure the doctrine, but they can't cancel you. And, uh, hey, listen, you matter to God, and that's all that matters. Amen. Although people are getting crazy. Nicole, where you at, Nicole? Nicole was telling me about somebody. Was that Chick-fil-A? Dunkin' Donuts. Those are two areas you need to be careful, okay? <laughs> I was going to take a picture of Chick-fil-A. I mean, it is ridiculous. I mean, it's a cult. It's, it is. I mean, people are like zombies. Like, oh, I got to get in line. But they get nasty. I mean, I, I just sit there and watch people. Like, I'm trying to pull out a target, and people are like, you know, calm down, dude. You, you know what I'm saying? I just avoid, I just go around it because, man, I don't know. But Nicole was telling me about this guy going crazy at Dunkin' Donuts because he thought she was going to. Cut in line, which she probably was, but um, <laughs> taking pictures of her license plate and doing all that, and you know, I, was like, I said, Nicole, those people, I just leave them alone. Don't <laughs> just look the other way. Or... Hebrews chapter five, verse eleven. It says, "Of whom." We have many things to say, hard to be uttered, seeing ye are dull of hearing. It's not that they're hard to understand or to say, except to you, because you won't hear it. See, it's hard to talk to somebody that doesn't want to hear it. Dull of hearing. You're just, and, uh, but you need it, okay? He said, I'm not, I'm not talking about you. Unless the shoe fits. Amen. Amen. Um, but verse 12, it says, For when, for the time ye ought to be teachers, you've been around the Word of God long enough. You've been around God's people. You've, you've heard it. You've been it. You've read it. There should be a measure of growth in your life as a Christian. You ought to be teachers. 
you have need that one teach you. you we just we just got to keep there's and some people you know have things going on and we just we just love people and keep teaching them but he said but you know you need to be further along and and uh you know we're waiting on you and let's let's go and and uh, so you have need that one teach you again um which be the first principles or oracles of God and are become such as have need of milk and not strong meat. So he says the word of God, there's some things that are, you know, as you grow as a Christian, you understand them. There's some things that you learn when, when you're new in it. And, uh, and he said, you're, you're still learning the things that people learn when they're new in it, but you have to learn it. So we're going to keep teaching you and we're going to keep praying for you and hope you get it, but, but, but you gotta, you got to grow, brother. Um, and uh, he said, but, but, but then you get to those things that are hard to be uttered. If you weren't dull of hearing, you could handle this. You could understand it, okay? Verse 13, he says, For everyone that useth milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness and is a... A little baby. Amen. Hold it up. Hold, no, not the baby, the bottle. The bottle. Okay. <laughs> See? That's what babies drink. Now I don't drink that. It says, um, it says verse 13, for everyone that useth useth milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness and is a babe. So the babies drink milk. And that's all they drink. I mean, like, that baby could go all week long and just drink milk. If I drank milk all week, I will not be here next week. <laughs> okay? See, it's different. We need different things. Now, it says, but, verse 14, but strong meat. So we, we're not planning a big steak dinner for the baby after church, right? Different. Strong meat. You know the Hebrew word there is rib eye steak. <laughs> charred, charred on the top. That's that, that's that word there. Strong meat belongeth to them that are are of full age. It's talking about a person that has grown in the Lord. They've 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 learned the word of God and they've 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 learned to love the word of God and be directed and guided and, and discernment in the word of God. Full age, even those who by reason of use. You know what that tells me? That the guy's a baby hasn't been using it. He might come to church. He might read it here and there. He might, might acknowledge it. And he might have said, hey, the most important book in the world, it's the Bible. But he doesn't use it. There's a difference in knowing it and using it. This guy, the Bible says the strong guy, uses the word of God. It says, strong meat belongeth to them that are of full age. Who? Even uh, those who by reason of use, use, have exercised their senses, uh, uh, have, have their senses exercised, to discern both good and evil. And if you know, if you use the word of God, you, your senses are exercised, you understand what the word of God says, then when somebody starts flipping it, good for evil, you're going to say, ah, right. Amen. you'll have discernment. You say, that is, you can't flip those. You can't cancel that. You can't cancel God. You can't, you can't say that wrong is right. It's in the Bible. I'll show you in the Bible. I'll show you. And you might get some of this. You might get some of this. You might get some, uh, uh, you know, shut up. But it's still right. It's still right. Look at verse 5, please. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 5. Second Timothy chapter 4, verse 5. 
It says, but watch thou in all things. It's all around us, right? Endure afflictions. Do the work of an evangelist. Make full proof of thy ministry. He said, listen, you're going to have some uh, conflict along the way. That's a flick. You're going to get affliction because of it. You do, you do the work of an evangelist. You keep preaching. You keep, you keep right. telling. You know, this isn't just for preachers. Right. It's for all of us, okay? Make full proof of thy ministry. Always examine. Always make sure you're following God and not something else. He said, now listen, because I'm getting ready to check out. For, my, for I am ready to be offered. He's getting ready to die. He's getting ready to have his head cut off. For preaching. That's why his head was cut off for preaching the word of God. For I'm now, now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand, as at hand. I fought a good fight. Verse 8, henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, remember he's judging us, shall give me, but unto all them that love his appearing. Now watch what he says. Do, now, now notice he's ready to meet God. I mean, he's lived his life. He knows, he knows what's important. And uh, now look what it says here at the very end of his chapter here. Or chapter four. Do thy diligence to come to me, unto me shortly. He said, man, try to get here. He's probably got a little cough. <laughs> He's cold. He's in jail. It's not like jail today. You know, maybe a dirt, mud floor, damp. Foods, you know, I don't know what they feed him. But just, just a horrible condition. He said, get here. Try to get here. He said, do thy diligence. Thought there is try as hard as you can to get to me. And then he said, as you can um, come shortly to me. That Try as hard as you can get to me, as fast as you can. Man, I'm cold. It's cold in here. I don't have any. They don't bring you supplies. They don't bring you medical. You're just in jail. And he's just there for preaching, preaching the word of God. It's so cold and, and uh, nothing to do. There's no TV. There's no nothing. Okay. Verse 10 says, For Demas hath forsaken me, having loved this present world. Look at verse 11. Only Luke is with me. Take Mark. Hey, while you're at it, have Mark come with you. Bring, uh, you know, come, come see me. Get here as fast as you can. Uh, do your best to get here. And bring Mark while you're coming. Man, he's, man, he's, he's a great brother, and he'll help me. And Man, I need, I need, a, need somebody to help me. So bring him with thee, for he is profitable to me uh, for the ministry. And Titicus, Titicus, um, okay. Uh, have I sent to Ephesus? Now look at verse 13. Hey, don't forget my coat. It's so cold in here. Don't forget my coat. The cloak. Just, just, just bring me a coat, something. So cold in here. Freezing in this jail. It's like Patuxent Baptist Church. Okay? <laughs> Bring my, my, my cloak that I left at Troas with Carpus. Hey, and when thou comest, bring with thee the books. I mean, there's nothing to do. Please, you know, he's a reader. Bring the books, maybe some writing material so I can write more books or whatever God might bring my way. Bring the books. Love books. But hey, listen. If you can, the thought here is above all others, or if you could only bring one thing, especially the parchments. He said, bring my Bible. Please. I'm dying in jail. Man, bring Mark. He'd be a help. He could, he could help me. If, even if I'm in jail, he could go do some things. Man, bring, bring the books. I'd have some, some, something to feed my soul. Bring a coat. I'm so cold. But if you can't bring anything else, bring my Bible. 
It was his Old Testament, his Old Testament Bible. Bring, and if you can't bring my coat, bring my Bible. I was thinking about this. When's the last time you asked somebody to bring your Bible? You forgot your Bible. I bet you've called about other things. Hey, um, you know, uh, can, can you get my, uh, I forgot my lunch. Can you bring my, you know, you call, can you bring my lunch? Or I got to go home and get my lunch. I have turned around to get my coffee. Not my lunch, but my coffee. <laughs> Honey, I left my coffee. Got to get my coffee, right? Oh, I forgot my wallet. Uh, you know, you're calling your wife and you're calling the kids and you're calling the neighbor. Please, you got to get my wallet. I left my Bible. Eh, I'll be all right. When's the last time you were that nervous, that upset that you left your Bible? You don't have your Bible. How important is the Bible to you? Well, probably every one of you said, Pastor, the most important book in the world. Is it? Uh, the ones that were strong were strong because they used it. Yeah. Let me ask you to bow your head just for a moment. If I were to ask you to stand, if you have spent more time in your Bible than on your phone this week, and I said stand, would you be nervous? How about the last couple of days? It's a weekend. I mean, most of you are off. You had a little bit more time. How much time have you spent on your, in your Bible versus your phone or a TV or game? Okay, you can look up. Is it that important? Did some of you even think, well, I haven't even really even been in it? I know it's the most important book in the world. It's the most important thing that I can have in my life. Know about it or use it. And the proof is in what you're using. Let me read you a couple of verses about the Bible. You don't have to turn to them. In Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12, it says, For the word of God... It's quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. If you don't have it, you're dull of hearing. You're without power. And you're not alive. You don't have life. Piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16, it says, For all Scripture, all Scripture, is given by inspiration of God and is profitable. Our life, that's what I said, if you don't have it in your life, you don't, you're not living life. You're existing, but you're not living life. They are life unto those that find him, them and health to their flesh. Proverbs chapter 30 and verse 5, it says, For every word of God is pure. You want some purity in an unpure land? In an unpure land, turn to the word of God. The word of God is pure. Every word of God is pure. He is a shield unto them that put their trust in him. Add thou not unto these words... Hey, listen, this is all we need. There's no other book. This is it. Lest he reprove thee, and thou be found a liar. If anybody says the word of God is anywhere, it's not in a dream, it's not in a vision, it's not in another book, 
If they tell you that, it, you're lying. They're lying, okay? Psalm chapter 119, 105, verse 105. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 8, it says, The grass withereth, the flower fadeth, but the word of our God shall stand forever. Literal. Listen to this. John chapter 12, verse 48. He that rejecteth me and receiveth not my words hath one that judgeth him. The word that I have spoken, the same shall judge him in the last day. We just read about that. The Bible says, well, you said Jesus is going to judge. Well, he will. He'll be on the throne, the Bible says. But he said, that's why he said, preach the word. Because this is what you're going to answer to. You're, you already know all the questions. There's no surprise at the judgment of God. Hey, if you're, uh, um, if you're not sure if you're saved today, the answer is right here. Amen. The Bible says life is through the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. He paid for it. He purchased your eternal life. Eternal life is through him. It's not through a church or anything that you or I do. It's not through anything man can do. It's not through religion. It's through the, the shed blood of Jesus Christ. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. It's right there. So when you stand before God and you say, well, I didn't know... Uh, he, he gave you everything you need to know right here. Hey, as a Christian, uh, it, there's no trick question. You understand that? There's no, I didn't see that one. If you didn't see it, you didn't look or you weren't listening. It's all here. And it's really not everything that God has to say to you. Now think about this. Everything for your whole life. Who'd like to live to, you know, you're like 40? Okay, somebody already passed that, amen? 40 years you ought to be able to get through it. 40 years you'll hear it without, on accident if you just come to church. Everything that God wants to tell you is between these two covers right here. And every, everything that you'll answer for will, will be inside this book. That's why we preach it. That's why we teach it. That's why we say it. That's why we give it. Because we're trying to get ready for the judgment. Now, so look at that. Listen to that verse again. He that rejecteth me, John 12, 48. He that rejecteth me and receiveth not my words hath one that judgeth him. The word that I have spoken, the same shall judge him in the last day. It's all here. Colossians chapter 3, verse 16. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another. Listen to this. In psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your heart to the Lord. The Bible says that the word of God should be in your music. The word of God should be part of your music. The word of God, the music should pre prepare your heart for the word of God. Did you know that? Music is not, not just for you. Do you realize that? Music, is, you don't just say, well, I, just, I like this music. It, that doesn't matter. Right. Does it have the word of God in it? Does it prepare your heart for the word of God? Well, that's not what I like. Well, um, well you're not going to answer to me. You're going to answer to him. He just said, that should be in your music. Uh, well, I, hey, listen, that's what the word of God is for, to bring us back. It doesn't matter what we like. You know what the Bible says? That uh, in the days of the judges, that men did right in their own eyes. And you know what happened? <laughs> the Bible says there's a, there's a way that seemeth right unto a man. But the end thereof are the ways of death. So this saying of, well, I think, is not a good thing. What does the Bible say? What does the Bible say? I want to think like he thinks. The Bible says, let this mind be in you, 
which was also in Christ Jesus. Well, how, um, this is his mind. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 1. Uh, my son, forget not my law, but let thine heart keep my commandments for length of days and long life and peace shall they add unto thee. John chapter 6, verse uh, 63. It is spirit that quickeneth. The flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. John 17, 17 says, Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. John 6, 68, Then Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life. John chapter 1, verse 14, and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. John chapter 16, verse 13, howbeit when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. Truth knows truth. John chapter 1, verse 1, it says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Now think about this. The next verse says, The same was in the beginning with God. You know, when Paul was leaving this old world, he said, man, if I have one thing before I leave, I want the word of God. I want to meet God having the word of God. God said, that's something. When I had nothing else before I created anything, I had the word of God. The same was in the beginning. And that's where everything came from. The word of God the most important book in the world. And you and I as a Christian ought to make sure that we're in it. That's all I can say. I think days are coming you're going to need it. Um, you've always needed it. But you're going to need, I'm just saying you're going to need it. You just are. Just growing up you're going to need it. You know when you get older life gets tough. I wish I was 12 years old. Man, when I was 12, life was fantastic. Now I'm older than 12. It's harder. I met God in the morning when my day was at its best. And his presence came like sunshine, like glory in my breast. All day long the presence lingered. All day long he stayed with me. And we sailed in perfect calmness over all those troubled seas. Other ships were blown and battered. Other ships were destroyed and in distress. But the winds that seemed to drive them brought to us a peace and a rest. Then I thought of other mornings with a keen remorse in mind when I too had lost the morning with his presence left behind. So I think I know the secret learned from many a troubled way. You must seek God in the morning if you want him through the day. Hey, it's a simple truth, folks. We just need, we need God. And, and, and not just go in and check in with God. Go in and meet up with him. Get together and go with him. Let me read you one more verse. Job chapter 23, verse 12. 
He said, neither have I gone back from the commandments of his lips. Job said this. I have esteemed the words of his mouth more than my necessary foods. He said it's the most important thing, more than eating. And the thought there is that word esteemed is also hoarding. Protecting, saving, put an alarm system on, put it in a vault. That's the thought there. Just you're getting as much as you can and you're keeping it as safe as you can. Think about what you've got insurance on, what you have locked away, what you have locks on, the money you invest in those things. Money you invest in keeping those things safe. What have we invested? Hide thy word in your heart. That's what God says. Spend spend something on it. Spend some time on it. Make an investment in hiding it in your heart. It's the word of God. That's why you see Christians do things like, how could he do that? Maybe he hasn't been using it. Maybe he's not strong. Might look strong. Might have the Superman costume on. But underneath, he's just Clark Kent. And he doesn't have the power. He's not strong. He doesn't have discernment. Because we're not using it. Let's pray. Father, as we come to you this morning, we're so grateful for thee and for thy word. Lord, we ask for your blessing and help. With their heads bowed this morning, let me ask you this. Maybe you're here today. Say, Pastor Connor, I'm saved, and I'm glad I'm saved, and I can give testimony to the Lord, and I'm going to raise my hand to the Lord and give him thanks that I'm saved. Would you slip your hand up? Praise the Lord. Amen. Good. Good. I'm glad every time I get to do that, I'm I'm just so happy because it was a time I couldn't. I remember a day that I couldn't raise my hand. Thank you. You may put your hands down. But, you know, immediately after I got saved, God started working on my heart about things. Immediately. I shared some things Wednesday night. Immediately God started saying, hey, you're mine now and you're a Christian. Um, let's, start, let's, start, let's start looking like a child of God and acting like a child of God. Maybe God spoke into your heart today about your Bible or something else. To you. I I talked to a preacher Tuesday. I went to a a preaching meeting and I walked up to him. I said, God spoke to my heart about two things, you know, but God said, that's it, that and that. Maybe that's you this morning. You said, God spoke to my heart about something and I'd like prayer and I just want to commit this to the Lord. Would you slip your hand up where you are? Amen. 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 God bless you. And that's between you and the Lord. You know what I believe? That at the judgment, you're going to talk about what he just told you. That's important. Hey, maybe you're here this morning and say, Pastor Carter, I'm not even sure I'm saved, but I am sure I want to know I'm saved. And Would you pray for me about that? Is there anybody, Pastor? Uh, Would you pray for me that I can be saved today. God would help me. Is there anyone at all? Anybody at all? Just slip your hand up where you are. Okay. All right, let's stand, please. I'm going to pray. And if you'd like to come and just do business business with God at the altar, that means you want to...